The MacDonald sisters, Katrina and Myrit, were part of the great diaspora of those who belonged to the Isle of Skye and Yelan Skianach. Their mother Margaret was from Linton in Stenshall in Staffin, and their father Dugald was from Portree. They were both born in Karachi, Katrina in 1920 and Myrit in 1921. They both spoke fluent Gaelic. They lived most of their life abroad in India, South Africa, England, Malta and the island of Sark and were much travelled as seen here on one of their many cruises. They were both artists, studied at the Harrow College of Art and were elected Fellows of the Royal Society for the Encouragement of Arts, Manufactures and Commerce in December 1943 having been previously registered as Qualified Designers for Industry in May 1943. Myrit died in 1990 and Katrina took ill in 2006 and was suddenly moved from Sark to Uig in Skye. Their artwork was rescued from Sark by Murdoch Mackenzie, the son of one of their cousins. It consists of over 1,000 pieces, of which we will now look at a small selection. Let's begin as we shall end with Myrit. Many of the pictures are drawn from memory and reflect Myrit's great sense of fun and her love of caricature. An English scene from Myrit's early days. A scene from Switzerland, a country of which she was very fond. And from Italy, with a little artistic license here and there. But now to India, where she was born in 1921 and where she lived till 1929, a country for which she had a lifelong affection. Her love of animals is ever present. Just look at the detail. And spot the tortoise of which she had several, the last of which is still alive in Sark, aged 70. A painting from 1946. and one from 1945. Again, just look at the detail. A compound in India drawn from memory on September the 23rd 1936. And here is an amusing approach to India. Finally, in the Indian section, we will have a look at an Indian legend written in Hindustani and in English. This series of 
37 cartoons, we'll not look at them all here, but there are 37, they're drawn from memory, and the medium employed is watercolour and ballpoint pens. They contain fantasies and are not aimed at being an accurate representation of South African life. They are full of fun, often on the part of animals at the expense of humans. Note the spider. And the snake. What's the grasshopper making of it all? And the chicken. Another tortoise. Here are different styles of housing. Thatched rendezvous and Spanish North African among others. Corporation employees from the Indian community. A typical view on the old north coast from Durban to Zululand. Inspired by the coal mining districts of North Natal. Insects are always asking questions. A typical North Road Township scene. The Muslim costumes may not be accurate. More snakes. A typical Africana dorp in the Transvaal and Orange Free State. Heady stuff. Another fun drawing. Bird thou never wert. Bunting in the mango trees for warding off minor birds. Again, the Muslim costumes may be inaccurate. A questioning fan-tailed dove. What are these people up to? Another fun picture, amusing the baboons. A chameleon caricatured on a grand scale. The Igre is the drill sergeant. Birds thou never wert. All in caricature. Spot the tortoise. And the snail. Dust storm impending. He is the green chameleon. She is the somber one.
brooms, missus, but she doesn't want to buy. More fun and no steering wheel. A new estate still under construction. A typical scene perhaps. This time the cat is wandering. More questions. Drawn in 1965 when under stress shortly before Myrit's mother's death on 2nd of March 1966. Katrina and Myrit both spoke Gaelic fluently and Katrina used her Gaelic Bible till she died. Here is a Hebridean legend written in Gaelic and in English. Like the South African cartoons, Myrit's Gaelic cartoons are full of fun. Let's enjoy them now. The mermaid is saying, Alas, alas. The Loch Ness Monster is saying, Your grandfather didn't have to put up with all this. Looking at the boy with the guitar, the wee hairy creature is saying, He's just a savage. The title below says, Up with the Gaelic. The lady on the left is asking, Do you have the Gaelic? Much of the rest is in Lowland Scots vernacular speech. Not paying attention to the song in the Cayley about the high bends and peaks covered in mist, the lady is saying, just look at her hat. At the Borbenish Hotel, the caption says, this is the WRI, Women's Rural Institute. Aren't they chic? Tourists surrounded by the wee folk. The man in the car says, What on earth? The fairy on the bonnet says, You're dreaming. The signposts point to here, there and everywhere, as well as to a cave, the poetry hotel and to the lighthouse. Note the VAT 69 number plate. All good clean fun for the unsuspecting tourist. The song is a lament.
The two cows, Primrose and Daisy, are looking at the Glasgow Achilles and asking each other, where did they come from and who let them out? This is to illustrate the well-known Gaelic song Fair Ian's Sister's Wedding. Surveying the bad news all around, the parrot is saying, I won't say a word, there's nothing good here, nothing, nothing, nothing. A Gallic song about a dog called Pilot which has been blinded, but the students aren't taking much notice of the teacher. There are another 42 similar cartoons in English, they are dream scenes, of which this is one of the Ritz Hotel. Here is another from Northern Natal. But we now need to move on to Myrit's drawings of ceramics. Both Myrit and Katrina painted vases from museums, including the British Museum. Let us enjoy looking at some of Myrit's. And we will now see some of Myrit's designs. Just relax and enjoy the colours and the intricacy of these 45 drawings.
And finally, one in a different genre, an unfinished design, yet beautiful. We now come to look at some of the work of Katrina MacDonald, the elder of the two sisters. Her museum designs include a 14th century vase from Egypt, sixteenth century Turkish ware, a jug and dish, and a vase. A mosaic panel from the Mosque of Sheikh Safi at Ardabil. Another beautiful ceramic vase. Two 19th century plates, one from Portugal, the other probably from Valencia. A 
a vase from the British Museum showing a lion on a warrior's shield. Another similar vase with a panther on a shield. A lion on painted and glazed bricks from Khorsabad in Assyria, dated 8th century BC. Two dishes, 10th to 12th century, Raka ware. Let us now look at some textile designs. A 15th century Italian satin and silk brocade. Block printed cottons or chintzes, 17th century perhaps from Smyrna. Mid-19th century English cotton chintz. And another similar piece. Cotton chintz designed by William Morris and produced by him at Merton in 1912. English, 1830s to 40s. Early 19th century Italian printed cotton scarf. Seventeenth century Turkish. Oberkampf cotton a hanging from 1783 Dutch East Indies early 18th century Katrina's drawings included various architectural studies from Canterbury Cathedral, Northampton and Nuremberg. Early French including Notre Dame in Paris and Westminster Abbey. Her museum work included other artifacts like these from the South Sea Islands
and these from Thebes and from Egypt. We now move on to her wallpaper designs which we can sit back and enjoy. They are significantly different from those of Myrit. We return now for a final look at some of Myrit's work. A triptych of panels for a fire screen set in imaginary places. A design for machine printed curtains. Another one, but very different. A design for hand-printed casement curtains to be printed on coarsely woven material. A design for hand-block printed curtains 
suitable for a restaurant at a seaside town. And now for a few more of Myrit's designs, illustrating her versatility. There are 59 printing blocks in the collection and here are just three of them. As we come to the end, we remember that we have only seen a fraction of the work of these two artistic sisters. We thank God for them and end as we began with the Sky Boat Song which was played at Katrina's funeral in Inverness on 9th September 2006. It is played for us now by Becky Hill on her Klaasach. Mm -hmm.